हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू योर ओन केमिस्ट्री गाइड उत्सव स्केम ट्रैक लास्ट टाइम वी हैव स्टार्टेड विद अ चैप्टर जिसका नाम था प्रैक्टिकल केमिस्ट्री आपके कन्वीनियंस के लिए हमने उस चैप्टर को डिवाइड किया इनटू अ टोटल ऑफ सिक्स पार्ट्स एंड वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड द फर्स्ट थ्री इट्स टाइम टू डिस्कस द फोर्थ पार्ट टुडे व्हिच इज कॉल्ड एज द आइडेंटिफिकेशन ऑफ अनाइन्स सो लेट्स गो टू आवर लर्निंग स्टेशन सो लेट्स स्टार्ट विद द आइडेंटिफिकेशन ऑफ अनाइन्स we have a total of 6 but in this particular part of the video we are only going to focus on 3 the names are given on to the board let's begin the first one is carbonate which is given by the formula co3 2 minus the next one is sulfide which is given by the formula so3 2 minus and the last one is called as sulfide jisse diya jata hai by the formula s2 minus now to differentiate between them we are going to add dilute h2so4 to each and every anionic salt i am going to get the liberation of three different gases with respect to carbonate i'll be getting carbon dioxide with respect to sulfide i'll be getting sulfur dioxide and with respect to sulfide yes you all guessed it right i am going to get hydrogen sulfide now what is going to be the difference over here we are going to use a total of two reagents which help us differentiate between them the first one is acidified potassium permanganate and the second one is acidified potassium dichromate which are given by the colors pink and orange respectively jab hum in dono reagents mein se carbon dioxide pass karenge to kuch bhi hone wala nahi hai which means pink is going to remain pink and orange is going to remain orange on to the other hand when i pass sulfur dioxide through both of them the pink is going to become clear colorless and the orange is going to be clear green clear over here means that light rays can easily pass through yani you can see through in the test tube and the last one is considered to be hydrogen sulfide ab yahan pe sirf clear aur clear ke words hame hata dene hain whenever i pass h2s pink will become colorless and orange will become green this is because of the fact that there are going to be yellow colored sulfur particles in the test tube jo light rays ko pass hone dene wale nahi hai you are not going to able to see through in this particular case so the first anion that we are starting with is a carbonate whenever a dilute acid is added to a metallic carbonate carbon dioxide gas is liberated this is one gas which is capable of turning lime water milky and when passed through acidified potassium permanganate or acidified potassium dichromate it has absolutely no change the pink remains pink and the orange remains orange respectively the next anion that we are identifying is sulfite whenever a dilute acid is added to a metallic sulfite sulfur dioxide gas is liberated which is again capable of turning lime water milky since the same test is shown by carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide this is not a valid test we then pass this particular sulfur dioxide through acidified potassium permanganate it is initially pink and becomes clear colorless in the same manner if we pass it through acidified potassium dichromate it is initially orange and then becomes clear green the word clear is important here because light rays can pass through and we can see through and the next anion in this series is sulfide whenever a dilute acid is added to a metallic sulfide hydrogen sulfide gas is liberated This is a gas which has a rotten egg smell. When passed through acidified potassium permanganate, it's initially pink and becomes colorless. And when passed through acidified potassium dichromate, it's initially orange and becomes green. The words clear are absent over here because we see the formation of yellow colored sulfur particles. This gas when passed over moist lead acetate paper it gives a silvery black coloration one more way to differentiate between a carbonate or a sulfide is using a particular solution called as barium chloride if you have a sodium salt of carbonate or a sodium salt of sulfide aur agar dono mein hum barium chloride ka solution dalte hain you all will be getting the formation of a white colored precipitate of barium carbonate or barium sulfide 
This is because of the fact that all barium salts are normally white in color. Apart from that, understand that barium carbonate as well as barium sulfide are white colored precipitates which dissolve in dilute HCl. The last thing that we have over here is another method to test hydrogen sulfide gas. The moment you pass this gas over lead acetate paper, it is going to turn silvery black in color. And you all know what, it's time for you all to take a snapshot. Another way to determine the carbonate radical is to take barium chloride solution in a test tube. Whenever a metallic carbonate solution is added to it, you will be expecting the formation of a white colored precipitate of barium carbonate. Please do understand that this particular precipitate of barium carbonate is considered to be soluble in dilute HCl. So if I take this particular test tube and I shake it thoroughly, you all will see that the barium carbonate white precipitate completely dissolves to give me a colorless solution. Another way to test the sulfite radical is again to take barium chloride solution in a test tube. Whenever I add a metallic sulfite solution to it, I will again be expecting the formation of a white colored precipitate. This time the precipitate is of barium sulfite. This precipitate is also soluble in dilute HCl. So the moment I add hydrochloric acid to this particular test tube, I will again be seeing that the precipitate dissolves completely to give me a colorless solution. So the next anion that we are trying to identify over here is called as sulfate and is given by the formula SO4 2 minus. The solution that helps us identify sulfate is again barium chloride. If barium chloride solution is added to any kind of sulfate, I get the formation of a white colored precipitate of barium sulfate. The only thing which is very very important over here for you all to understand is that barium sulfate is insoluble in dilute HCl. A slight recap. Barium carbonate was soluble and barium sulfite was soluble. So using barium chloride understand that you all are capable of differentiating between a carbonate and a sulfate and a sulfite and a sulfate. But carbonate or sulfide could differentiate karna using this test is not possible. The next radical is sulfate. To test it, we again have a solution of barium chloride. And whenever a metallic sulfate solution is added to it, you again expect the formation of a white colored precipitate. But this time the precipitate is slightly different. If in this precipitate, dilute hydrochloric acid is added, you will see that there is absolutely no difference. Even if I shake the test tube, the precipitate remains exactly the same, which means it is insoluble. The next anion that we are going to identify is chloride and chloride is given by the formula Cl1-. If there is any kind of an acid or any kind of a salt that contains the chloride radical, usko identify karne ke liye, you should use silver nitrate given by the formula HNO3. Jaisa hi aap aisa karoge, you all will be getting a curdy white precipitate of silver chloride. With respect to silver chloride, understand one thing. It is a curdy white precipitate which is not dissolved in HNO3. Hai. But at the same time, it is soluble in something called as ammonium hydroxide, which is given by the formula NH4OH. While trying to identify the chloride anion, we will be taking a silver nitrate solution. Whenever a particular substance that contains the chloride radical is added to a silver nitrate solution, it first gives me a curdy white precipitate. However, this curdy white precipitate completely dissolves in ammonium hydroxide, giving me a colorless solution. And the last anion that we are identifying in this series is called as nitrate, which is given by the formula NO3-1-. Now to identify the nitrate radical, what should you do? Just be solved mein tumhare paas nitrate hai, you are supposed to add turnings of copper and to that you are supposed to add a few drops of extremely concentrated sulfuric acid given by the formula H2SO4. The moment you do this, 
you are going to get reddish brown fumes of nitrogen dioxide. It is a gas which is capable of turning potassium iodide paper brown. So if you get the reddish brown fumes of NO2 and if those fumes do turn KI paper brown, samaj jana that that particular salt that you started with considered nitrate as the anion. One more thing is possible, you all can carry out the brown ring test. Brown ring test ko carry forward karne ke liye, take the salt add freshly prepared ferrous sulfate solution to it and by the sides of the test tube add a few drops of concentrated sulfuric acid. Test tube mein, there will be a total of two solutions concentrated sulfuric acid and ferrous sulfate. Un dono ke junction pe, yani when the first solution ends and the second solution begins you will be getting the formation of a beautiful brown ring. The moment the brown ring comes understand that the salt that you initially started with contains the nitrate radical and you all know what with respect to all the three anions that we have over here it's time for you all to take a snapshot to test the nitrate radical for you all we have made freshly prepared ferrous sulfate solution since i want you all to be shown the test of the nitrate radical i am adding a few drops of dilute nitric acid to this particular solution. Now to initiate the formation of the brown ring, I am going to add very very carefully drop by drop concentrated H2SO4 from the sides of the test tube. This particular reaction is extremely exothermic so we must be very careful. Now if you all see the concentrated H2SO4 being very very dense has settled into the downward direction. Just at the junction of the two liquids, you all are able to see the formation of a brown ring. So let's start with the fifth part of the chapter where I am going to tell you all how are you all capable of differentiating between a total of two solutions where the first one is acidic and the second one is alkaline. The most obvious thing you are going to use is indicators which are a total of 3 in number. Usme se pehra wala hai litmus. Litmus ka initial color hota hai purple. The moment you add it to an acidic solution it turns red and the moment you add it to an alkaline solution it turns blue. The next indicator that we are going to use is methyl orange. Obviously baat hai. It's going to be orange in color initially. The moment I put it into an acidic medium it will turn pink and in an alkaline medium it's going to be yellow. The last one is phenolphthalein. Phenolphthalein is a colorless liquid. The moment I add it to an acidic solution, kuch bhi hone wala nahi hai. Ki colorless remains colorless. On to the other hand, if I add phenolphthalein to an alkaline solution, it's going to become pink. Ab ye hai tumhare physical test. The chemical tests are relatively better and they are more important. Agar tumhe differentiate karna hai between an acid and an alkali, in both of the solutions, you all will add sodium carbonate as a salt and heat it slightly. Only on an acidic solution, acidic carbon dioxide gas is liberated. The gas is colorless, odorless, has absolutely no effect on acidified KMnO4 and acidified K2Cr2O7. Yes, it does turn lime water milky. As a koi bhi gas alkaline solution may liberate, hone wala nahi hai. On to the other hand, you all can add ammonium chloride and heat it slightly with respect to both of the solutions. Koi bhi gas is bar acidic solution mein nahi aega. But an alkaline solution will give you all a basic gas which is nothing but ammonia. Ammonia is given by the formula NH3. It is a gas which when passed through Nessler's reagent turns it brown in color. And yes, it's time for you all to take a snapshot. Now let us show how we are capable of differentiating between an acidic and a basic solution. If I take blue litmus paper and I add it to an acidic solution given here, you all will notice that it turns red. And now if I want to test a basic solution and to that basic solution I add a red litmus paper, it is going to turn blue. The next test of an acidic solution is with respect to methyl orange. When a few drops of methyl orange are added to an acidic solution, it turns pink in color. Now when the same methyl orange solution is added to a base, 
we notice that it turns yellow in color. The last test of an acid is with respect to phenolphthalein. And when phenolphthalein is added to an acidic solution, you will be noticing that there is absolutely no color change, which means colorless remains colorless. And when the same phenolphthalein solution is used with respect to a basic solution, you will notice that it is going to turn pink in color. Now I'll be showing you how to differentiate between an acidic and a basic solution, but here we'll be using a chemical test. If you are going to add sodium carbonate to an acidic solution, you all will see the formation of a brisk effervescence. This is because carbon dioxide gas is liberated. Please understand that it is a gas that is capable of turning lime water milky and has absolutely no effect on acidified potassium permanganate and acidified potassium dichromate. However, if the same sodium carbonate is taken and it is added to a basic solution, there is absolutely no change. So let's start with the last part of this particular chapter where we are going to differentiate between a total of two solids. The first one is copper oxide and the second one is manganese dioxide. Now the only reason we are differentiating between them is for the fact that both these solids are black in color. Now what do we do now? To both of the solids that we have, we are going to add concentrated HCl and we are going to supply heat energy. In the case of copper oxide, no kind of gas is evolved. However, in the case of manganese dioxide, we get the liberation of greenish yellow chlorine gas. Once you are done with this, you can filter the entire solution that you have obtained in the first reaction and to this particular solution, you all are going to notice the color. In the first case of copper oxide, the color of the filtrate is going to be bluish and in the second case of manganese dioxide, the color of the solution is going to be brownish. The last thing that we are going to do is to both the solutions that we have obtained over here, we are going to add a small amount of ammonium hydroxide. Copper oxide ke case, mein, first we will be getting a pale blue precipitate when we add ammonium hydroxide in a small amount and when we add it in excess, it's going to dissolve giving me a deep inky blue solution. Aisa precipitate ya aisa solution manganese dioxide ki case mein aane wala nahi hai. And yes, finally, it's time to y'all to take a snapshot. Now for the last part of this particular video, as y'all can see, we have a total of two black powders given in front of y'all. While one of them is copper oxide, the other one is manganese dioxide and now is the time that we will differentiate between them. Here I have taken copper oxide and to this if I add extremely hot and concentrated hydrochloric acid, I will be expecting that the copper oxide dissolves. After some time you all will notice that the copper oxide dissolves and I get a blue colored solution. To this, if I am capable of adding ammonium hydroxide, it will give me a deep inky blue solution. Now, if I take manganese dioxide and to this I add extremely concentrated HCl, greenish yellow chlorine gas is liberated. And over that, if I place starch iodide paper, you all will notice that this particular paper is turning black in color. Please do notice that the solution that we have over here, I am taking in a test tube. And I will dilute it thoroughly. You all will notice that this particular solution is actually brown in color. And to this brown coloration, if I add a small amount of ammonium hydroxide solution, you all will not expect the formation of any color change or any kind of precipitate. So here's hoping that I see the comment section completely filled up with comments saying that the chapter practical chemistry for you all is much easier after watching this video than it was before.
अगर ये वीडियो आपको पसंद आया है तो प्लीज गिव अस अ बिग थम्स अप सब्सक्राइब टू उत्सव स्कैम ट्रैक एंड हिट द बेल आइकन फॉर ऑल द लेटेस्ट नोटिफिकेशंस